guys, how are you doing today? Are you wondering uh, about my stylish shirt from Cat Head in Clarksdale, Mississippi? Hey, I'm going to give you some information down below. Is that what you were wondering? Oh no, you were wondering why we're on our 47th episode of the same guitar, this Econo Archtop 1950 silver tone well hey i want to be thorough and i have decided out of the kindness that is my cold lifeless heart that i am going to share with you a, a proprietary secret that only i know and what's the context well these old arch tops have what are called i call butter bean tuners you see these um when they get old, um, there's no escutcheons. Things start jamming up. They're open gear tuners. A little Mar Marvel Mystery Oil or some lithium grease might help you out. But inevitably what happens is the guitar falls over. One of these breaks off or these become fragile and you're turning it and this snaps off. And remember, my guitars are built to trash on. So, when I start looking at these and start seeing that one's bent, do you know how you fix one of these? Yeah, you take a soldering iron, you heat it up where it's bent, and then you take a tuner uh, winder that will fit it and bend it ever so carefully. Or you can actually replace these, but I'm not going to mess with these. I want to replace these, and therein lies the birdhouse methodology of replacing tuner machines that's what they call them tuner machines on a junk econo archtop guitar so say goodbye to these and through a very secret process that you will not share i don't want to have one of those fancy 90210 people writing you a letter but we are going to replace these and you're going to learn something that's going to have you going, where have I been all my life? Thank you, Ken. Even more than you usually do. Anyway, let's get to the bench. Okay, the first thing we are going to do before we go to work on junk pile in the 1950 Silvertone junk pile is to heat up our hide glue and hot water. Next, we're going to take this wonderful fender DG8S Natural. Isn't that beautiful? And we're going to tear it apart. Why? Because, ooh, that's not pretty. But we're going to fix that as part of the fix on the silver tone. Why? Watch and see. Okay, we are so way far ahead of this. I've taken off the screws of the tuners and the strap button. And now using this fancy scrapparatus, we will. Hey, look at that neck wobble. It doesn't even want to stay in the stand. This thing is all crazy. I have this on high speed because I'm just that sharp. They call me the Ginsu knife of fake Lutheranism. Ooh, look at that wrong way yeah I'm not doing guitar repair in the United Kingdom or wherever they call it so we'll stay on the right side of the road okay look at that there we go I'll tell you what the repair I'm going to do on this thing is going to be permanent 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 like you've never seen before anyway isn't this exciting? I'm glad you get to see every part of this. Just in case you have never, ever seen anything done to a guitar before. If that's the case, then you, my friend, are my favorite viewer. That's good. You need to subscribe. Anyway. Ooh, uh, Korea. Hmm. 
that's different nowadays, isn't it? Anyway, well, let's get the rest of these off here quick. Alrighty then, phase one complete. Tuners from Fender model, I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is because I don't do flat tops. You all know that. Let's move quickly into phase two. I've decided to do a mercy save on this guitar. So we're gonna flip it around like so. Isn't the stand awesome? Look at that. That's not too cool, is it? Well, we really need to fix that as part of this project. Okay, this is when one of my favorite scraparati, that's plural for scraparatus, the hide glue heater comes in very handy. Oh, look at that. Almost smooth camera work. We're focusing right there. Action. Non-stop action, Acton, California, cultural capital world. I have globbed a generous amount on here. And I want to be semi-careful because I do not want this repair ever to fail because this guitar is going to be put under a great deal of stress. Did you know that there is a metal rod in here to reinforce the neck? Kind of like what Harmony and K used to say, st steel reinforced neck, but no truss rod, okay? You see this careful technique I'm using here? Yes, look at all that. All the way back to here. Okay, now, before I clamp it, it's very important we get the neck angle the right way. So using this highly sophisticated technique of building an endless loop. Basically, you cut a piece of sash cord longer than twice as long as what you need it. You tie a knot and you make a choker like this. Trust me on this one, we're gonna to go to the back of the guitar and we are going to hook on to the strap button. It's hanging there, it's magical. Next, we are going to untie one of these things that's meant so it doesn't fray everything. We're going to drop that down through here and through here. Oh, we stripped that back. That is kind of like the pushback wire that I typically use in my wiring harnesses. Anyway, this is becoming very cumbersome. You know what the best kind of dressing to use at Halloween? Yeah, that's right, Mrs. Cumbersome's. Now, we're gonna tie this back to itself using some kind of arborist knot that only I know or just made up. You'll never know unless you're an arborist. And if you are, why are you watching my channel? You have trees to trim somewhere, right? And we're gonna take this end and we are going to go through the end of that. And we're going to watch this. We're going to pull this up like so until we get the kind of semi-appropriate angle that we need back here. I want to be careful that I don't break the neck, right? Well, never mind. It's already broken. Anyway, we're going to tie this off snugly using a series of half hitches. Yeah, you're welcome. You'll get that merit badge sooner or later. Anyway, tighten that up. Now, we're gonna use this clamp stuff here. I'm gonna start back here. And we are gonna clamp this up like so. Oh, it's slipping. It's slip sliding away. Alrighty then, exactly like I planned it, even though I had to use three or four different kinds of clamps and start over three different times, but you didn't see that anyway. Now the exciting, waiting for hide glue to dry. It's kind of semi-important that you get the bleed off out because again, this guitar, given the application it'll be used for, will never have to be repaired again until the day 
it dies. Alrighty then, on to the next step. We want to be really, really careful in how to take these clamps off of here. Not to leave unnecessary Mars, not like the planet, but like in complexion. And then we will do our and do our fancy rodeo thing here and flip that off the back. It's just like throwing chain in the oil field. See, one hand. All right, that's not that bad. So let's turn it over and get to the next step. You're not going to believe this. There is a $20 bill inside this guitar. Yes. Only me, people. Only me. Okay, now. This is where the proprietary technology comes into play. Watch this. This is a coat hanger. No wire hangers, right? This is what we used to call a magic marker when I was a kid. We line this up here, which leaves the middle here. We make a mark here and here. Three marks. We cut the hanger here and here. We bend the wire just outside of the mark there and just outside of the mark here, like so. We cut the hanger here and here, and I'm about ready to cut the super thruster muffler off of that car. Now, we carefully stick that there like that, bend this up, bend this up, and then we will put these together like so. Now we're going to trim that end like that. Notice the fine precision. And look at that. Completely and utterly disamazing. Now we are going to turn the guitar around and upside down. Upside down you turn, whatever, like so. You see that? Okay, now you need something that looks like this. They come in different colors. Which one do you think matches this? Consider the coat hanger as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to mount one of these right here very carefully. Oh, camera angle way off. This is precision work. There is the where they brought everything together. That has to be precisely in the middle. Notice the precision camera work. Now we're going to take a bit it is roughly the same size as this. No, this is not a common drywall screw. This is a galvanized common drywall screw. And we're going to, with a great deal of precision, put this here like so. And we're going to drill in to the tail block of the guitar. Now, that done... We are going to take a lot of time and unnecessary footage here, but we are going to put this Bingo. You see that? Okay, it's going to become very technical right now. You need a piece of cardboard and you need the love pencil and you're going to stick this down in here 
the bracing V's right here and you are going to make a mark like that so you can end up with a loud motorcycle going by during the most technical part of the show. You're going to end up with this because this will fit down in here like so. Trust me, I can see it even if you can't. Ye have little faith. Now, we're going to take a neck, a cigar box neck cut off, and we're going to use said love pencil and mark there, there, and there. And we're going to cut that out so it's that thick. Okay, this plus this equals this divided by this equals that. Check it out. Can you see that it fits perfectly? Well, it does. And you have to trust me. All right, step 27. This is up. This is not up. We are going to take our hide glue, which is warm to the touch, and we are going to use rosin solder brush and put an ample coating of hide glue here. There we go. Then we are going to use clamps and we are going to put this right in here like so, like so. Now, the trick to this is not to have any of the rounded portion of the block of wood we just cut sticking out. And then we will just allow this to dry. There we go. Okay, for you non-believers, it looks like that. Ooh, ah. Uh. Someday I'll have enough budget to get the prices wrong or Vanna White on here to go like this on the ooh-ah part. Anyway, waiting for glue to dry, the story of our life. Now, we are going to take a drill bit and drill down precisely through the rosette and through the block we just put in. Notice how wonderfully I did the rosette without messing it up. Now, we are going to take our hide glue brush and we are going to daub on a copious amount of glue there, like so. You see that? And right here, be careful of that rosette. This is a priceless guitar. You see that right there? Look at that. And we're going to put this end in. Oh, this needs to be exactly this long. And then we're going to put that down in there. And we're going to push it through till the glue reaches the bottom of the guitar. And then we're going to very carefully, or somewhat carefully, wipe off the ooze off here, or ooze out, or whatever you want to call it. We may temporarily get rid of this clamp here. But this has to be oh, oh, so clean. I don't want the guy on Antiques Roadshow 200 years from now to have any clue what happened. We're getting close now 
it's almost time for the tuners. One more step. For this next critical step, you will need this and two more of those fancy drywall screws. And then you will very carefully do this. Then you will do this. And then you will do this on the bottom. Yes, that's what that shelf bracket was for. Checking that placement. Yes, and last thing, it will be accompanied by a suet container. Thus the birdhouse method explained. You are so welcome. Oh my gosh, do you see what I see? Shh. It appears we have our first, first visitor already. Let's get a little closer. Oh, what the dog is that? I don't know, but it's still cold out. And I think reptiles are a little slow to react. He doesn't seem to be sheepish, he or she. Easy, buddy. Easy. Welcome home. Welcome home. You're welcome. Okay, back to the shed. Okay, so we're gonna get it right back where we started from. Yeah, I'm a victim of the disco 70s before, remember? No escutcheons, very thin, easy to bend, look like a butter bean. I just put this here so you could see how beautiful this headstock is. Let's flip this thing over and start the work. Notice I have one of these supporting the back end. Nice to have a pillow under the back end, right? All right. There we go. Jack this up a little bit. Adjust the pillow. Can you see it now? Can you see Okay, me? so don't forget, get a magnet, get a tin, and that way when you're taking your scrap apparatus off, you can just put it right in the tin. Like so. Sticks right to the magnet. There we go. On the tin now, we just work these out. It appears that maybe something's a little bent here. So we don't want to pry these too much, but yeah, now somebody's going to be looking for these. These are original, so don't throw them away. There are some guitar shops, like one that I know of, that will want these. But now, remember these? Yeah, painfully, I'm sure you do. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take a reamer and we are going to ream these holes out rather than drill them. Okay, so when you're using a reamer, um, the reamer is going to make it less likely that you're going to break everything out on the bottom side. If you're coming through this way of the drill, it always fractures out here. Um, before I forget, we're going to want to take a little bit of glue and everywhere where there's a hole that we don't need anymore, we're going to take our let me see if I can get them open. Bacon flavored toothpicks. Yeah, you know them. The ones that never run out. I licked each one of these to make sure they're still bacon flavored. But you can see here, I don't know if the angle's right, but there's been numerous tuners on this thing before. So anywhere where there's a hole, we're going to dip this in wood glue. Uh, we're going to snap the very end of the toothpick off so it's not so pointed like that. And then we're just going to glue that in, plug that hole up and snap it off. And then if you want to go back into the watercolors and mix all that and touch that up, go ahead. Usually I just...
put a daub of Chick Flick Teal Blue on there so you know I'm the one that messed everything up. Anyway, moving right along. When you're using a reamer and you get to the part where this will fit, don't um, use um, a drill bit if you find out that you're going to be too close to the edge and you know, wall or everything out. But now that sits down in there just perfect and the reamer when I got to that spot I put a piece of tape on there so when that hits on the rest of them we know what the deal is there we go okay you remember this waste not want not always clean out the tip of your wood glue when you're done with it anyway we're just going to take a little bit of this glue and everywhere that there is a raven on the roof of the shed right now now anywhere where there is a hole where there was a tuner screw we're going to go back and do this and this is assembly line work that I actually learned at Green Giant Canning Factory Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, cultural capital of the world. I'm going to snap off the end like so, and we're going to put that in there, and then we will snap that off. We're going to file that down a little bit, go to the other end, and since there are four of these, and since they're all tapered, and since we can use two a toothpick on each and we're going to use four toothpicks imagine that check it out raw proficiency and that leaves us one more snap and snap We'll want to take something here and clean this up and file these down. I won't bore you with that. Okay, perfect. Now, just a matter of lining these up and drilling pilot holes and putting my already prepared Chick Flick Teal screws in the headstock. And we'll call it a oh, day. Almost forgot. If you've never done tuners before, you don't want to drill your pilot holes with the bit way down in here because this part will interfere with the tuner. Nor do you want to drill through the headstock. So what you do is you get a piece of tape, you put it on your bit, and you make sure that where that tape is will not be all the way through. Get them nice and straight, line them up, and just as soon as that hits the top of your tuner, you're done. All right, these are used tuners. You remember that. These are the birdhouse method tuners. So they have a flat part on the escutcheon washer and a domed part. So that domed part would be the one that's dirty facing up. And they thread right down into there. And a 10 millimeter nut driver is what you need. I didn't tighten up the screws on the back all the way until I get the fronts tightened down. It causes for a lot of flipping over and over, but that all comes with being an awesome fake luthier. That's what it looks like after Okay, look at that. You know what? Wouldn't it be cool if someone did a song called Look at That? Well, guess what they did. It's right up there, right about now. You wait until I'm done talking. You listen to me because I guarantee you this episode was completely and utterly disamazing and I swear I can speak for most of my viewers in saying you have never receive this much useless detail in your life before. That's right. So, 
moral of the story here is if you've got a bunch of guitar bodies laying around and everything like <laughs> the best thing you can do is do some quaint little did i just say quaint no i did not don't tell anybody but do some craft like that thing i just did or take some of these necks that are broken you see this one Ooh, that looks like a lot like a national wouldn't you like to walk into your man cave and use this for the door handle yeah you're welcome or better yet when you're as old as most of you are by my analytics tell me that you are you can put one of these in your shower and then when you fall down you can get back up until the mounting screws that you use to mount this haphazardly fall out of the wall and then you're back down but look guys your safety is not my <laughs> concern anyway i swear i'm going to get this thing wrapped up i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna we're gonna get a pickup on here but this thing is far too pretty to say it come out of my shop so we got some dressing up to do here and here and some other places with use, useless scrap apparatus i am single-handedly recycling the world hey if you get down to clarksdale mississippi go see cathead and everything else down there and have a good time and tell everybody i said hello that will increase your credibility drastically hey you know you can't miss the next episode i will see you soon don't forget subscribe and give me a like i got to go check on my new friends in the birdhouse.